Saikon Simbla. You're watching Saikon Talks. It's time again. What's up, y'all? We got Saikon coming in. Um, I'm looking forward. I'm looking forward. Let's give it some time for people. To, dang, already 93. Dang, it went from 93 to 2,296. That's crazy. We in here. Oh, no, 608. Woo! Keep the, keep the money coming. Nice. Uh, for y'all just tuning in, what's up? I'm, I'm Britton Smith. Um, I'm one of the co-founders uh, and president of the Broadway Advocacy Coalition. And uh, we're here to talk about um, what justice looks like what it really means to earn the phrase Black Lives Matter. We're talking about racism in our industry, racism in our streets, what it's like for an actor to be a color and how to deal with um, the virus of racism. And uh, we're looking forward to having a conversation with, thank you, love this look, thank you, darling. <laughs> we're looking forward to having a conversation with Saikon and um, really, really thrilled, 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 thrilled. Oh my God, I love your earrings. Thank you. My mom hates them. My mom is like, why do you, why do you got so many earrings? I think it's cool. So thank you. Um, yes. Can I get everybody to just write hashtag BLM real quick? I want to see what that looks like and feels like. Yes. Oh, Saikon is here. Let's get it going. Uh-oh. Saikon, you were there. I saw you. I know I did. Uh, we're also going to have a conversation with Brittany following. Um, I, we all know Brittany and Saikon. I'm looking forward, looking forward. Let's see. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Saikon, where you at? Uh, looking forward. Yes, thank you. Hashtag BLM flooding, flooding. Yes, please. There we go. Saikon, I see you. We're coming in. We're coming in. Hello from Canada. Thank you for, come on, mobilizing BLM. Thank you. Hey, hey, hey. Oh, oh, yeah. How are you? You look radiant. Ew. Thank you. You, said, you look Ew. great. Ew. You look great. I will take that. Look at these little plant babies. Yes. <laughs> How are you? Hi. I'm good. It's so good to be here. I came in earlier and I made some comments and I put the request, but I think you didn't see it. So then I was like, let me come back out and come back in. So I'm, I'm happy secretly, to be here. I'm secretly kind of old too. So there's oh, people ah. on my other thing being like, Britain, you got to do this. You got to do that. I'm secretly kind of old. So <laughs> I'm just thrilled that we in the room. We're here. It's so great. Thanks for making time and being present with us. Thank you. Oh, absolutely. It's really good to see you. It's really good yeah. to see you. You're such a talented. Likewise. Yeah, you're so talented, and I'm just so appreciative of this work that you are doing. In addition Thank to being talented, handsome, Broadway, all that, you Thank are you. doing this work, and it's so important. Hi, everybody. Hi, Rachel, the adorable. I see people in here. Abigail yeah. Burbridge. Thank you, Abigail Burbridge. She says we're both beautiful humans. OMG. Hi, yeah. everybody. Yes, and not only beautiful humans, but like willing humans to talk about the truth. And I think there's a time right now where a lot of people are stopping because of the coronavirus to listen. And so people are like, even some of my friends who are like, wait, I didn't know and I'm one of your best friends. I'm like, oh, but there's a black understanding that is now coming to light. So how have you been dealing with new levels of listening from white friends or white colleagues during this time? That's a really good topic. You know, I was, um, a friend of mine was saying that a lot of her white friends were sort of um, reaching out to her all of a sudden and she found it kind of fake. And I was like, wow. I said, because I actually wish that more of my white friends would reach out at this time. Yeah. I appreciate active, oh my God, I didn't know this. I'm going to make a change. I'm going to try something new. I appreciate that. So I, I literally had one white colleague reach out to me and say, hey, Saikon, are you okay at this time? That was one. one. Yes, yes. One to just reach out to me individually. 
I'm not counting like, like I'm on thread, like I'm on a thread for the cast. You know, I was in Hair the Musical. I was in um, Eclipsed on Broadway, you know, different shows. Which we have all you were shows. fabulous in. Oh my God, one second. I'm sorry. I, like, I don't mean to fangirl right now. You <laughs> I was just so moved, so moved. I knew your voice, I knew your talent, but your access and your ground and your understanding of humanity and I just felt our ancestors working through you. I'm just so seriously, so sorry, I had to just fan boy real Thank quick. You. No, I will, so I, fantastic I, in that. I will, receive, <laughs> I will receive the moment. No, but um, Yo, I am on you, threads with some amazing I'm on some phone threads with some amazing human beings who I did shows with um, and so they were there was a, a, a bubbling of conversation like in the hair thread and um, but not like an individual sort of hey how right uh oh I think we're our job is to be magical and splendid and story. happy Oh. Hmm. Now you're back. I don't know you're what back. to do. Back. Back? That was a double. That was a double. You're back. Okay, hold on. Pop my knee. Um, I'm back. Yeah. But you you like brought up a good thing is that being black doesn't mean we all receive the same thing different ways. We get to right. say, No, I don't want you reaching out, and then we also get to say, I want you reaching out. So when you're not black, you may be like, Well, how can I win? I don't know who you want. I don't know who wants to be reached out to and who doesn't. That's why you make a relationship. And that's why you ask and you lead with your impulse of your heart. And yeah. you deal with that consequence of actually I need space or yo, thank you for reaching out. We're not all the same. And so that's another yeah. thing that you made clear. There's so much nuance. There's so much nuance in humanity. There's a lot of nuance. I remember years ago, I was on um, the AIDA tour and there was a, there was um, there was one guy who was a swing. He was a black guy who was a swing. And I was single, and he was single, but we were friends. And um, one of the, somebody on the tour, a, a, a castmate said to me, you're single, he's single, you guys are both black, why don't you guys date? <laughs> and no, I was, no. I was like, well, the same way that white people come in, surfer dude, business dude, nerdy dude, punk rocker dude, uh, insurance dude. Black people also come in nerdy dude, surfer dude, yeah. insurance dude, punk right. rocker. So like, just because we're black doesn't mean that that makes us the same or makes us compatible. We all have like just as many types of people as there are um, black, white people. There are just as many types of Asian people. There are just as many types of black right. people, you know? And um, I, I, it was so interesting when I realized, I was like, wow, people really, a lot of people really do see black people as a monolith. I appreciate right. you guys having me on here. I know some people know and some people don't know that I was the first woman to, the first black woman to perform the role of Elphaba yes. in Wicked. And yes. it, it was, uh, most of my castmates were all great, you know. There were some comments here and there that were might have made me a little uncomfortable, you know. But during my time there, Ben Vereen came and he played the Wiz, the Wizard, the Wizard. Um, you know, I, I think that there's been so many different, uh, so many different events happening lately that just, I think has made people afraid, like you say, afraid to try. And I think, you know, it depends because people feel beat up when they try, you know? And um, I'm just trying to encourage people to right. try. Right. right. We go to the gym to grow and we know that we're going to be hurting, but we know that there's a solution and a goal to our body that is helping us. You know what? This hurts my gut, but I'm going to get those summer abs. It's that same type of, of like desire. If you want to grow your consciousness and your awareness to make the black people around you and in this country feel seen and valued, you have to do uncomfortable working out. It's not gonna just come to you easy. So yes, I I support that fully. I get it. I get it. And That's it's a lot of people's job to do. Because you gotta, you gotta do yeah. those push-ups. You gotta do that. You know, you gotta do those planks. And and they and it's uncomfortable. Yeah. But, but six weeks later. Oh, honey. But 
But six weeks later, after you've put in all that uncomfortable work, my God, Ooh. you look good. You look my God, good. you feel good. Yes. Yeah. Yes. That's real. So um, let's talk about Wicked. First of all, go off, sis. We need you. What is the work that needs to happen in Wicked to make their more state cons, to have more of that? You know, I'll tell you something interesting. <clears throat> when you guys first reached out um, for me to come on live, I was like, oh my God, what am I going to say? You know, they're not just this, but in general, this whole, the whole Black Lives Matters movement, um, the same way that there's different um, nuance and different types of people, everybody has a different style of protest, right? So right, there, right. there are people who are like, I want more roles, kiss my, you know what I mean? Like there are people who are, you know, and then there are people who slowly but quietly gather their coins and start their own theater company. There are people who, you know, there's different ways that people work. And I recognize that a lot of us have been sort of pushing down our feelings for a very long time, you know, in order to make sure that the people that we work with, you know, white people or otherwise, that they feel comfortable. Right. Um, and so we don't generally express our, you know, our feelings, the feelings that right. the racism or the, you know, the different microaggressions and different things that we experience. I think it'd be wonderful for um, the U.S. company in Wicked to try at least to have a permanent um, black alphabet at one point. You know, I don't know that they've ever done have they, that. Have they ever had that? Not on, not on Broadway. I don't believe. Yeah, I okay. was a standby. And okay. for those of you who don't know what a standby is, a standby is it's sort of like the my brother always say I'm like the, the second the second tier quarterback. You know what I mean? Um, so I'm as, ready for the game. Yeah. So as yeah. the standby, I did not do the eight shows a week. My poster was not, there was no pictures of me. I never even actually had an official photo shoot, which is why when you go on certain wicked websites, you won't see my photo. The photos that circle around in the myth of it all are all photos from my own collection. They photos that came from my Saycon Talks blog or, or they've come from my website or wow. things like and so all of that is because I took my own photos. All of that is because of me keeping my own mis memory of, of my time doing that show. Um, and I know that, that there, it, you know, I will say, you know, I have seen lots of photos of uh, Kadeem Alexander. I hope I'm saying her name correctly. She was the first black alphabet in the UK production. Or in London? In London, in, in UK. Okay. Yeah. And, um, I want to make sure I'm saying her name right. And I've also seen, and her pictures look amazing. I've seen some bootlegs on YouTube. We love YouTube, and, and she looks amazing. Um, Brandy Massey was with me. And I don't think that Brandy had an official photo, photo shoot either. But, I mean, that's the thing with Broadway shows. Alexia Kadim. Thank you, Alex. Kara. Thank you, Alex. Yes, Alexia Kadim. Yes, like, you know, I've seen beautiful photos of her. In fact, because I'm constantly tagged in her photos. Um, <laughs> Because, you know, we have similar features and it's green yeah, and yeah. people know that I was the first in the U.S. in the, in the first in the original Broadway production. Um, but I wow. think it'd be great to do a full time, you know, Elphaba or Glinda, to be honest. You know, there's yeah. been they had they've had been Vereen. They've had um, uh, what's my girl? She's literally in my kitchen right now uh, from Dream Girls. She's Madame Marble at one point. Um, um, Sarah Renee Scott. No, uh, Cheryl Lee Ralph. Cheryl Lee Ralph. Oh, go, go. Cheryl Lee Ralph. I really messed up. You know, uh, <laughs> yeah, look, I didn't mess up. It's, it's early in the day. You know, we all have. And it I kinda, it's, it's, it's like 1206. It's 12. Yeah. It's talking about 12. You know. No, it's like that oh, point yeah. in the day where. It's that point in the day where you're like, it's not morning, so you're not fresh morning, but it's not mid after you like right around. But yeah, I, I'm like I think almost it's almost here to do that. Say it again. I said, I, I'm like almost all the way here. Yes, yeah. Um, I think it'd be great for them to do that. And I, heck, I would love to throw my my hand in the pot for when they do the movie. I would love to be considered for a role like that. You no, know, I know that um, they, you know, they a lot of times movies look for big, huge uh, names once they do the movie version. That often yeah. happens, you know. Um, but I've had other firsts. I was. Arguably, I was the first, um, I would say, chocolate Mimi in Rent. Like me, chocolate, African, yeah. 
Mimi, not um, racially ambiguous, not, you know what I mean? Black. Um, yeah, yeah, black. black. You know what it's, I mean? I, love to call myself black. I know people have terms, but... Say that again? There is a difference between, you know, like someone just asked, is there racism for the uh, um, Latinx person on Broadway? I'm like, anybody that is not the white dominant will experience the personal effects of racism. Even somebody yeah. white can experience and see the effects of racism, but the personal effects of racism, everybody who is not white, I believe, will feel that. Asian, oh, yeah. black, Hispanic, Latin. So, but but the black and also experience. white white parents of black children. I all often see some of the biggest allies are people who either have biracial children or they've adopted black children, or are they raising Asian children or they're raising Latin children but they're white and then you see them as these huge allies because they experience prejudice when they walk into the restaurant with their right. child they, right. they so they know it from a, a you know a more specific example you know right right let me ask you this is there what does it feel like for you when you're on stage um and you're being praised by the audience and by a cast like you're in this environment of like joy and value and then you leave that and you leave there and then you just become, not just become, but your identity is not based on your role. Your identity is your skin color and how you live. So I remember in Shuffle Along, and this is what I actually probably for Black Lives Matter, we were, oh no, Saquon left? Come back! No! Saquon, you left. It was getting good. We were about to crack them oh man um thank y'all for listening and being patient uh my partner's biracial that's fantastic uh yes i'm so thrilled that we're learning so much about Saquon. here we go boom um and her journey we're gonna get her back there we go add we're back in that was a little mishap I don't know what happened it was most bizarre it just suddenly like it just dropped out i was like whoa and then it just yeah. and I was, we're back we're back we're back we're back okay so i was talking about you know during shuffle along it was very it was at the it was right when eric garner had died and it was a tragic murder that we all saw and we're all affected by Ooh. we still had to work we had to feel that we were on stage dancing going off hang it out and shuffle along it felt great we were on stage with pioneers and then having to leave the stage and go back into reality i felt like i had two black faces does that make sense to you where Absolutely. your value for your blackness in one space but in the majority of spaces your value is people are scared of you or they think they don't know that you went to college they don't know that you love your grandma they don't know they just see your black self how do you deal with knowing that you're being viewed with different eyes as a black woman in the industry and outside? You know, it's interesting. I um, the there's the black, the the two ways of being viewed because sometimes as a performer, as an entertainer, you bring people joy. People um, will sort of give you a lot of love and a lot of you know, you know. But when people don't know who you are. There can be a whole different um, interaction. Yeah, I'm highly aware of, especially being like a, I would say like a C-list, D-list celebrity. <laughs> like when I'm in I Times, say, Square, I say A B, I say B, really. <laughs> thank you, but but you know, like when I'm in Times Square, if I'm on a date and I'm in Times Square, and I haven't told my date, you know, that I do theater, you know, it's like a first date, and people are like, "Hi, oh my God, can I take a picture with you?" They're like, "Who are, what, who are you?" But we can be in a whole nother Ooh. area. Nobody knows anything, you know, whatever. But coming, being on stage, receiving the accolades, and then leaving the theater, and sort of like once you get out of that five block radius from Broadway, you know, um, there's still people pushing you out the way for cabs. There's still people, you know, being really, you know, I've sort of, I put these blinders on in a way, you know, almost like a, like a racehorse. I put those blinders on so that I can keep moving in life. I mean, even. Uh -huh. Even during the time, like preparing for uh, to travel, you know, because it's it's quarantine and I want I want to get out of New York. I, as a black person, this is something that some white people may not know, but as a black person, when you're looking at like Airbnbs or, 
you're looking at reviews, you're going to always scan down and look for the black people's icon so that you can see their review. Because you'll see, you know, were they comfortable in that town? Were they comfortable in that home? Not meaning the home, because the person that's doing Airbnb, if you put your home there, you know you're doing that, right? No. How did you deal in that city? How were you treated in that environment? You know what I mean? And even especially traveling right now where tensions are so high, you know, there's like an extra, you always have to sort of do an extra level of research. Like you watch, you watch a review, you're trying to pick a vacation. Oh, I want to go to Germany or, oh, I want to go to, I don't know, wherever you want to go. I want to go wherever. And you're looking, you're also trying to think, okay, how are black people treated in this country or in this city? How are black people treated in this, in this area? How are black people treated on that block? Like you literally have to do that extra, that extra little uh, research. And um, hey, Dion, hey, hey, Dion Figgins, I see you yes, in there. Yes, Dion. Yes. Thank and you. I saw Charles Browning in there earlier. Much love, my boo. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like, oh. like that. People don't understand. There's like extra steps you always have to take. You know, even just being a black woman, if your hair, you know, when you have, when you get an audition, you're like. What what's the hairstyle for this audition? You know, do I have to go get the, the the curling the flat iron out? Do I have to straighten my hair so I can be more palatable for this particular right role? You know, like there's always ten extra steps. Being on right. a television show, you're like, oh my god, I hope they got my colors in their kit. When you sit down in the the makeup chair to get your makeup done, like yeah. nobody understands that sort of extra level of stress that you. Let me ask you this: How do we? What's our role? Because I know I know exactly what you mean about the Airbnb thing, about will I be safe here? And going that extra mile to, to see, will I be safe? And I can't help but to realize that. When I'm, I'm parking my car at night, work. when I'm parking my car at night, will some neighbor say, you don't belong here. What are you doing here? You know, that has happened to people who were staying in the Airbnb. Yeah. Black people who were staying in a, you know, staying in a location, and then, yeah. and then the people in the area were like, "Why are you going into that house?" But they know that their neighbors rent the house out for the summer. Wow. You know wow. what I mean? There's a very popular. They were on like Good Morning America. It happens all the time. You know, just because the person hosting is is open doesn't mean that their the neighbors the neighbors are. Yeah, and our 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 parents felt that need to do that extra work. Our grandparents did. Our great grandparents certainly did. You know, so this there's this like generational trauma and need to be cautious and really see: Am I safe? Am I safe? So, what's our role to make sure our kids don't have to be as cautious? Is that possible? Is that too hopeful? Or do we? You know, I can't wait to be a dad when I have the resources and the and the the space to be a dad. I'm gonna be a dad, man. I can't wait. But I'm gonna tell my black son. Some of the same things that my mom told me, but I hope I get to tell him less things, you know? Yeah, I love it. You know, like growing up a black child, I grew up in Georgia and my mother, not necessarily just, you know, let me see, you know, different parent, parental figures, mothers, aunties, whomever. If you went to the store, they would tell you, don't put your hands in your pockets. You know, don't like, don't touch the, don't touch nothing. Even like if you're a little kid like shopping in the store and you're like, ooh, and you, you lower your hand side, you're afraid that they think that you're going to steal something and put it in your pocket, yeah. you know, like all those things about, you know, make it home and don't, don't, you know, don't look like you're stealing and don't look like, you You know, I hope that this next generation doesn't um, have to hear those tales, you know, you yeah. know, when you pulled over by a car, all that kind of stuff, you know, it's interesting to say, but it's sort of a thing like don't touch nothing don't you know because not because your parents think you're gonna steal but because other people think that you're gonna steal they're gonna follow you around the store you know there's all these right. little things right yeah I, um, so what do we and i love loved hearing I you say that you want to be that hmm? thank you thank you I love hearing that because i know a lot of black men that don't want to have children because of what they experience, because of the racism that they experience. It's, it's fascinating. So the black men that I know um, who share their families on uh, 
Instagram or on, you know, on social media. It's really pleasurable to see that um, because a lot of black men have been turned off from the idea of even having children because they wow. have such a treated so often, you know. Wow. Wow. My last question to you, and then we're going to bring in Brittany Johnson. I can't wait. Um, what do you think? Shout out to Brittany. Can I shout out to Brittany? Let's go. Shout, let's go. Shout let's go. Let me tell you, when her, first of all, Broadway Black, um, Drew had, he did this wonderful piece on her. Shout out to Broadway Black, Drew, Shade, Antonio. Broadway Black, yes, Drew. So, yes, Drew. so very lit. But he did this wonderful piece on her. And I was just bawling. I was so excited because in all my days, I always, so I have a friend named Nikenji. Um, I don't know if you know Nikenji. Yes. She yes. Uh, always wears, she, a lot of times she wears big blonde curly hair. And I always saw her. Maybe Nik Nikenji can be a, a black um, Glenda. You know, I said, they cannot say it have anything to do with blonde hair. All these good Mary J. Blige with deep rooted, you know, with root realness. Looking good. Please. I said, they can find themselves a brown, you know, a good old chocolate Glenda. So when, so when that happened, I was so thrilled. Like I was getting my life. I was posting it everywhere. <laughs> I was, I was sharing yes. the YouTube. I was sharing the clips. I was so yes. excited. I mean, yes. I was like, just for BLM, we should do um, Wicked Musical. Listen up. I think for BLM, we should do a special Zoom um, concert. Ben Vereen, Cheryl Lee Ralph. Me as Alphaba, Brittany as Glenda. You, did you? What did you do? Did Yo, you do? I wasn't in Wicked. Oh, you never. I don't know why I thought you did Wicked too. I think people think I'm, I was in Wicked just because I'm aggressive and, I, and I'm just taking over Wicked's platform. I see. <laughs> no. I thought you were in Wicked too. Let me tell you, because Wicked oh. thing, that show's been going since 2004. So there's so many people who've been in Wicked. Derek Williams for she she's uh, in. Come on, Brittany's in. Derek she Williams, Piero. Like let's do it. Oliver, yes. You know what I'm saying? Let's yeah. Let's do this. I, let's, do, uh, let's do this Zoom. Come on, Wicked. Let's make a campaign. Let's make a campaign. Come yes. Come on, let's do this Dreamcast for for BLM and raise money, mm -hmm. charge for people to come on and see that Zoom, and let's do it. We can do like a concert, maybe a one hour concert or, or a thirty minute concert. No, I, know I they, am because so I know they precious it. about them. They precious about them alphabet songs. I don't have that. My contract, I can sing all the alphabet songs I want, but a lot of alphabets, they can't sing alphabet songs after they leave the show for the first couple of years after they leave the show. But it's been a long time, so I can sing all the alphabet I you want. Can say all of it. Let's go. No, <laughs> but I'm, I'm, I love that idea. I think you're about to ask me a question, and you got to bring Brittany on. But come on, like, what's up, Wicked Musical? Let's let's no. Um, let's put a Zoom concert for the people. I know there was a black block in the UK. I was just looking at his picture last night. Let's do it. Dude, I love that idea. I think we should. It's done. It's already in the universe. It's already you know, in the world. You know, see Ralph gonna show up with her face beat. Yo, 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 she's incredible. Remember her on um, Moesha? Yes, just a pretty. I used to be mom. like, why can't my mom be like that? Right. Why? Why can't I have dimples like that? Let me tell you what I. Every day I eat breakfast to Cheryl oh, Lee Ralph in my Loretta. kitchen every morning. I always say I drink, I make smoothies. Um, you guys have to check out my podcast and my, my YouTube channel. Follow me on YouTube. It's called Sit Talk. Um, YouTube I channel? I sit and I sip smoothies with Miss Cheryl Lee Ralph. I know you had one That's more question and you got to bring Brittany on. Is. What is it? Said, oh, the YouTube channel is Saycon Talks. So just put in Saycon Talks. I have a whole series that I'm doing now regarding... Uh, transitioning because I've been doing a lot more television and film lately and I'm going to be doing so many different um thank you topics. Charles it, yeah it's, it's hey Charles thank you Charles yeah like I have the Saquon Talks platform it's it's YouTube channel there's a podcast I have stuff for Broadway people and I also have my stuff for my grown and sexy you know we talking life grown, grown and sexy pop culture talk so yeah they're oh, I'm, let me find out I'm looking I want to come in. I, I want to listen. Um, come through. I'm going to be in there. I'm going to be but you in got, there. You tea with me. We have to sip tea. I do herbal I, tea. Darling. Darling. Let's Yes. Sip. We'll let's have our sip. tea. 
you know. But not to distract, again, I'm, I'm challenging Wicked Musical to go on and raise some money for, for BLM with this Zoom, yes. with this, this Zoom con, this 30, just 30 minute, a 30 minute Zoom concert. I think an hour at least. An hour, okay, something, little something. We can do snippets, yeah. have to be the whole, this, you know. And then the people, hey Gary, hey Gary. And then the people will buy tickets because they'll be excited to see the show once Broadway comes alive next year. Yes. It's going to be, the, you know what I mean? Yeah. I'm thrilled by it. I, and, and like we have to, in this time, dream and manifest. Not just sit back and feel, but no, no, no. What's missing? Dream and oh, thank manifest. You. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yo, I'm going to bring on Brittany now. Cheers okay. to you. Thanks for your yeah. offering of of thought. I mean, there's so much here. And then we'll keep asking folks questions. But thank you so much, Sekhan. Mwah. Enjoy the rest of your day. You yes. are an amazing man. I appreciate all the work that you're doing. Thank you, sis. Thank you, sis. That you have the passion and the strength to move forward in this. I personally, sometimes I get down, I see all the beatings, and it makes me like, I get, I get actually really inactive when I see that stuff. So I have to kind of, I can't watch it because I get so sad. So people who are able to push forward, push through and make coalitions and make something happen. You know, I really appreciate you. Really, really appreciate the work that you're doing. So thank you. Bye, everybody. You. Thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you. Love you. Bye, love. Love you. Bye. Oh, my God. What a light. What a light. My, my, my. Um, that was a joy. Um, I'm actually gonna cut this off so that we can share that separately. Brittany, you're gonna, we're gonna make our own live just for you. So we'll be right back. Thank y'all, thank y'all, thank y'all.